Hello wonderful person, this is Anton, and in today's video we're going to discuss the center of our galaxy, the Milky Way, and we're going to take a look at what it may actually look like according to the scientists and according to modern research. Now we're actually going to approach one of the stars that we have studied very, 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 very many times, a star by the name of S2, which essentially orbits very, very close around the supermassive black hole Sagittarius A um, in the center of our galaxy. And this is the star right here. Let's talk a little bit more about this and also try to recreate this using Universe Sandbox. Welcome to What The Math and enjoy the video. <laughs> And the reason I actually wanted to come to this star is because there's a few things we actually know about uh, Sagittarius A black hole because of this star. If you accelerate time in Space Engine or really any other space game that has uh, this particular star and also um, Sagittarius A, you'll realize that um, it actually orbits this invisible location in the middle every 16 years or so. And we were actually able to observe at least one of the uh, orbits um, in the last uh, 16 years. And this is essentially how we at some point realized that there's got to be something going on, there's got to be some kind of a supermassive body in the middle that this star orbits around. And at some point when it's actually nearest to the, um, to the black hole, and I'm going to show you that point in a second. And to find this uh, point known as periapsis, I'm going to take a look at the orbits here. And so right around here, this is actually when uh, it's going to be moving the fastest. As a matter of fact, uh, currently the velocity of this star is something like 3% of the speed of light. So it's actually going something like 9, 10,000 kilometers per second. Um, and uh, this uh, particular star is essentially the reason why we know or we think we know that there is actually a supermassive black hole somewhere in the center because otherwise it would not really be um, explainable. We don't really know why why um, why else the star would actually move in such a way and why it has such a strange orbit. But there's a lot more things we've actually discovered in the last few years about Sagittarius A and, and about this actual, um, about the central region of space um, around the, um, uh, the central black hole. And we're actually going to talk a little bit about it today and try to recreate it as well. But first, let me actually accelerate time so you can actually see how many different stars there are moving around the central black hole right in the middle. And now let's actually do this in Universe Sandbox 2 and let's recreate um, the system also known as the central region of Milky Way in, in this game. So there is a Sagittarius A already, um, although the values for the mass here are actually a little bit outdated. So here's the story about Sagittarius A. About uh, 15 years ago when I was still in university, we didn't actually know this even existed. Um, back in 2002, there was actually a paper that sort of unofficially proved or showed that there was uh, definitely a central uh, massive, supermassive black hole uh, somewhere in the region called Sagittarius. Um, and uh, eventually people realized that this was probably uh, the central black hole that everything orbits around. And then um, a few years later, specifically back in 2008, this is only about eight years ago for me, we finally were able to actually um, estimate the size, estimate the mass uh, relatively accurately. And so the values that we've discovered so far are between 3.8 million um, masses of sun and 4.3 million masses of sun, but it's very likely to be closer to 3.8. With the radius right here, the so-called um, Schwarzschild radius, um, of approximately 43 to 44 astronomical units. And um, that's, of course, very similar to the um, orbit of Mercury around the sun. So the sun here would be somewhere in the center, Mercury would be orbiting in this fashion. Uh, but so here, so let's uh, let's actually recreate the system using um, different stars and also using different other things that we've discovered about the central region. So first of all, there's actually quite a lot of stars orbiting around uh, the central region. As a matter of fact, there's um, thousands and thousands of stars, but uh, very, very close to Sagittarius A, there is maybe only about a dozen that we've studied quite well. But the one that we've studied quite a lot is known as S2. Um, it's a star that actually does have a very elliptical orbit, and I'm going to add it right now by just selecting a random star here and placing it somewhere here. And so there is S2 with its uh, relatively elliptical orbit at uh, 16 years, and it's going to pass by the closest um, region right here and accelerate to about 10% of the speed of light, 
and pass by the central black hole. There we go. So that's uh, what we've uh, known for about um, maybe 10 years since 2000, um, 2002. And then we started discovering new things. We actually quite discovered quite a lot of new things about the central region. One of those new things is that we actually think there is also at least one intermediate sized black hole with a total mass of approximately 1300 masses of sun. So we're actually going to add that as well at a distance of about um, three light years away. And so here is that intermediate black hole that also orbits uh, Sagittarius A, but uh, this this here has a quite a long period. It's actually um, something around um, 40,000 years. And um, it's about three light years away, so it is not very far, but it's also not very, very close. And in order for us to actually see it move, we, have, we would have to accelerate time quite dramatically. Um, but uh, we've also discovered some other things, some really interesting things. And this is actually a very recent discovery um, that was made in some of 2016 by I believe it was a person by the name of Mark Morris um, working for the Galactic Center at UCLA um, who basically um, said that uh, we've discovered that um, we have quite a lot of smaller black holes orbiting around Sagittarius A uh, and interestingly uh, the number that he provided was actually very very high now um, before I place all of these black holes uh, let's actually talk about why there would be there so the reason why um, we actually originally predicted that there would be a lot of black holes close to the center is because if I have a black hole right here and then I have another star orbiting close to it, what would happen is because black hole is a lot more massive or um, in this case, it's not actually that massive, but let's just say this is 10. Um, because this black hole is more massive, it would um, pull on the sun a lot more than the sun would pull back on it. And because of this, black hole would eventually slow down and come closer and closer to the galactic center. Whereas the star here, in this case the sun, would actually accelerate and go to the outskirts of the galaxy. And uh, with time, after billions of years, many of these smaller black holes got attracted to the center um, of, um, of our galaxy and started orbiting around Sagittarius A. Now, the person who officially came up with this theory uh, basically stated that this was like maybe 20,000 or so black holes in there. But um, the researchers using uh, Chandra Observatory discovered that there is actually uh, around 10,000 black holes in this region which is actually quite surprising. So in other words, um, in the region of about 70 light years away, which is around somewhere here, in this region, around the black hole, there's about 10,000 black, little black holes, small black holes that orbit everywhere. Now, I'm not going to be able to place all 10,000, but I'm going to place a few around the uh, region here. And we're going to see what, what the actual immediate region looks like. So uh, somewhere in this vicinity, there should be approximately a few hundred black holes just orbiting everywhere and we obviously can't see them unless they interact with matter or unless they basically um, interact with a star nearby and sometimes they do that and as a matter of fact um, that's how we found that these black holes are there within the three light year radius so right here we've discovered that um, there were at least three of these interactions so basically three of these black holes were getting matter from somewhere, from, from a star or from just a space dust, and essentially then um, releasing it as X-ray radiation uh, of uh, variable types, which is usually attributed to either black holes or neutron stars. But essentially, this is what the central region may look like. It's, a, it's basically a supermassive black hole, a bunch of stars around it, which I should probably, I should probably place more stars. We're not going to rename them, we're just going to place a bunch of random stars here and there. And also, let's disable the labels and the trails. And, okay, maybe not the trails, because then you won't really see the black holes. Trails will stay. Um, and so here we go. My computer is already having trouble with this, but basically, um, this is kind of the more realistic face of the central region of our galaxy. So there's a few stars, a lot less than black holes, because many of these stars will actually get kicked out to the outskirts of the galaxy, but there's some stars in here. And the majority of space here is essentially... Um, well, there's a few stars here, obviously, but yeah, the majority of space is essentially black holes, quite a lot of these black holes. So there's at least 10,000 that we think might be there. I think I've placed about a hundred or so. Um, and so that is essentially 
what the central region might look like. So next time we decide to actually go for an exploration there, we need to really, really think about how we're going to get to this region and how we're going to survive this place without really colliding with one of these black holes or getting some crazy um, re relativistic effects from it. Uh, but so that there you go. That's what it all looks like in Universe Sandbox. Now, I think I can't really accelerate this past 40 years per second because unfortunately I've placed way too many black holes and so they're really slowing this down dramatically. But if you want to see what their orbits look like, this is essentially it. This is the orbits of the black holes and the stars all together. And anyway, so that's all I really wanted to say about this um, and wanted to basically kind of show you what we know about the central region as of 2016. Uh, as I mentioned before, this is all a relatively recent discovery, so it's still not 100% certain. Like, this is not a fact yet that there is a supermassive black hole. It's a very likely speculation, a speculation that so far has no other explanation. But uh, nevertheless, uh, it's a speculation that many people, including myself, agree with. And um, it's very likely that this is going to be a region we're going to study and learn more about in the next decade or so. Anywho, I hope you learned something from this video and I hope you'll subscribe if you still haven't and you'll share this video with someone who you think may like watching space videos and learning things through video games. I'll see you guys in the next video. Thank you for watching, game later, and as always, bye bye. Now let's see what happens if I actually accelerate this even more. Oh, I can't go any further than that. But it looks like my central stars here are really going crazy. And look at this beauty. Oh, is that my S2? Interesting. So with time, the S2 star um, actually circularized its orbit around the black hole. And its actual orbital period now um, is only 178 days. And so this is something we call um, tidal evolution. It, it actually changed its orbit into almost a circle. Awesome.